Another beautiful day in the world of heritage with Oloije Ekigbai. Today on Heritage, we are at Ubiaruku community in Ukwani, local government area of Delta State, to witness Ikenge Festival. So wherever you are, this is Heritage on ITV. Welcome to Delta State. Ubiaruku is the headquarter of Ukwani, local government area of Delta State. It is one of the major homeland of Ukwani-speaking people. The town is situated in an advantageous position, having River Ethiop as a common boundary with Edo states. Obiaruku is highly populated and agriculture is their mainstay. <laughs> Presently, Obiaruku has no king, but the community is governed by the eldest man known as Oparuku, assisted by Council of Elders in the administration of justice in the land. Therefore, oral history has it that Obiaruku inhabitants came into existence by the sole effort of a hunter, Moka who left Mwebu community in search for a conducive life, arrived the present-day Obiaruku and settled near the Ethiop River, where he carried out his haunting business. This community was founded by one chief, Moka Okpo, way back 17th, 18th century. He came from Mwebu and settled down the stream. He saw the stream there and he decided he was a hunter. When he wandered from Umubu in hunting expedition, he saw the stream, Ethiop River. He stopped by the side and then made a settlement there. And that was how Obiariku developed. People from other places, particularly Umubu, started to come to join him in his settlement. And that is how Obiaruku came into existence. Well, Obiaruku itself is a clan. The whole from the beginning to the end is one clan. Umubu itself, from where Moka came, is also a clan of his own. And so that is how they are. They are separate clans. There's a man called uh, Moka. He was a hunter. Then he migrated from uh, Umebu down to Biaroko. As, as he was hunting, he, dis he discovered the uh, Ethiop River. Then he settled there. From there, a man called uh, One of uh, um, the a man called Lifeli accompanied him down to Obiaruku. It was there they found Obiaruku. And people started migrating, meeting them here from Umebu down to Obiaruku here. That is why we settled in Obiaruku here. History also has it that Ikenge festival evolved due to total resolve of the ancestors' search and quest for long-lasting events that will bring people together for merriment. The festival normally a people without a culture have no beginning. Uh, this is a culture we were born with. 
Now, this festival is called Ikenge Festival and it's celebrated once a year in Ubiaroko as a whole. So it's a carryover right from our, our home, our ancestral home, Umwebu. See, at, at the end of every year, we have a Kenga festival. This Kenga festival is a festival of uh, merry making. Thank our God, thank everybody to show all that we have. The word, the word for the year is exhibited to people. All Okwani clan celebrate this festival. It's called the Kenga Festival. It's a festival to demonstrate strength. So anywhere you are of Ikenga Festival, it's festival for those who are brave. And they celebrate it peacefully. Ikenge Festival consists of two events, that is Ukwata and Ure Festival. It is an annual celebration of the people of Obiaruku. This period is set aside to showcase the rich cultural heritage of the people. It's also a time set aside for the sons and daughters of Obiaruku, both home and diaspora, to come home to discuss the well-being of the community. The festival marks the end of one famine season and the commencement of another. Due to the period of the festival, people do not engage in farming as they remain at home and enjoy themselves and make merriment. Ikenge festival kickstarts with Ukwata festival, which signify love and harmony among the people. Ukwata festival is an annual event that promotes tourist potentials of the community. The Ukwata festival commenced at the compound of the spiritual head of Ukwata as both young and old in the community gathered to watch the chosen one pass through the ritual. The Ukwata who danced along the street to the village square performed before the gathering in different styles. <laughs> Victor Atoma. Okay, are you from this community? Yes, of course. So how do you feel about celebrating this festival? Ah, uh, very nice, very nice. It's a very wonderful culture that we celebrate, peaceful one of that nature. So we are proud of the culture, we are proud of our people. The celebration is very okay. It's very interesting. <laughs>
Before one is allowed to carry the ukwata, which is made of spiritual items, the spiritual heads of the community consult with the gods of the land to ascertain the spiritual status of the people, whether he is fit or not. The climax of the event is the Ori Festival, where the people of Obiaruku showcase and show strength with the use of cutlass as the elders and orders sit at the village square to watch. of a king feast like today I can say I'm a successful farmer because I was able to feed people with yams a lot of yams with uh, the, the the soup we used to call the soup uh, ofune or we call it uh, 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 but we call it ly ly is the name of the food 
and a lot of people came, they ate, they enjoyed, they married with me. That is to say, I'm Oshiji. Fish is nice since I was uh, born. Today's fish is more that is bigger than the rest fish. So I thank the community and also the chiefs of our town. <laughs>
It has been beautiful in this community and I must say they are warm and happy people. It has been an exciting time witnessing the Kenge Festival. To meet again next week for another exciting edition, we could come to your community, you can never tell. Till then, do have yourself a beautiful day. Bye for now.